Hi everyone and welcome back to The Shack and an episode that I've been looking forward to for a couple of reasons. Firstly, I never owned an MSX and until researching and producing this video had never used one or really paid much attention to them at all. I mean, I was aware of them as I do remember them being around when I was a kid, but they did largely pass me by and maybe passed you by too if you're in the UK or the US where they didn't really take hold. If however you're from Japan, Korea, Brazil, the Middle East or continental Europe you've almost certainly come across these machines before. And secondly, in a recent video about the Cambridge Z88 I featured a clip of Sir Clive Sinclair being interviewed at the Earls Court Computer Fair in 1984 where he outright stated that the Sinclair Spectrum was and I quote, two or three times as powerful as the MSX machines and the MSX was in effect a five year old architecture which given the date of the interview would put MSX being created circa 1979. So what was MSX? Why did Sir Clive Sinclair single it out for comparison and importantly was he correct in his statements? In this episode we'll start our journey into MSX with this unit, the most prolific MSX machine in the UK, the Toshiba HX10. This one is apparently in good working order so I'm keen to get it up and running and looking as good as the day it came out of the factory and then load up some games and importantly test out that statement from Sir Clive about the performance of these machines with a good old head to head with a specy. Right, let's crack on. In the early days of the microcomputer onslaught in the late 70s and early 80s, machines were being announced all over the world at a rate of knots, each new machine offering something different, new or improved over the competition, some new feature or some new price point designed to lure in buyers hungry to see boundaries being pushed and to see just what could now be achieved. Whilst this was great for innovation and a hotbed of entrepreneurial talent, the world had just been through a similar, albeit smaller scale battle between different video formats such as Sony's U-Matic, Betamax, VHS and the Outsider V2000 format created by Philips for the European market. And while VHS had emerged the victor in that battle, the losing parties had collectively lost billions in the process. Surely the computing market could go the same way and ultimately there would be winners and losers. On the 16th of June 1983 the unified MSX architecture was announced by Kazuhiko Nishi, then Vice President of Microsoft's Far Eastern Division and a director of ASCII Corporation who wanted to branch out from magazine and software publishing and into the hardware market. Nishi had formed a great relationship with Bill Gates and had made Microsoft very successful in the Far East through selling Microsoft licenses and convincing PC makers to include Microsoft software as part of their offering. Following the announcement, the tech world had no choice but to sit up and take notice. This was surely going to be huge, Eastern manufacturing excellence, renowned quality and reliability and aggressive pricing coupled with Microsoft by then rapidly becoming a major force in the computer world and brandishing Microsoft Basic itself becoming a de facto language already present in many manufacturers machines in the Far East, the US and around the world. In the UK at least there had already been a significant loss of British trade and manufacturing to Japanese companies who had taken firm hold of the hi-fi, calculator and home electronics markets and there was a fear that the same could happen with the home computing market at the time dominated in the UK by Acorn and Sinclair. Within two weeks of the announcement pretty much all of the major Far Eastern manufacturers including Toshiba, Canon, Mitsubishi, Fujitsu, Hitachi, JVC, Sanyo, Yamaha and Sony had pledged to create machines that adhered to the MSX standard and most had brought machines to market within a year of the announcement. So what was the MSX architecture? 
Well, let's first talk about the name, MSX, which stands for, well, there's not a definitive answer for that. Some say it's Microsoft Extended, others thought it to be from Matsushita Sony, still others that it's machines with software exchangeability. In any case, the name had that nice three letter, three syllable structure, just like VHS, so that seemed good enough for most. The proposed architecture consisted of a Z80A CPU running at 3.58 MHz, a 32K ROM large enough to hold 16K MSX BASIC, itself a derivative of Microsoft BASIC, and the 16K BIOS, a minimum of 8K RAM, although most machines ended up with 32K or 64K, a Texas Instruments TMS9918 video display processor which allowed for a 256x192 high resolution mode, 40x24 and 32x24 text modes and 32 hardware sprites, a General Instruments AY38910 programmable sound generator and the machines would have to be able to support floppy disks, cassette tape and ROM cartridges. So in preparation for the bout ahead we have the tail of the tape not looking good at this point for the Spectrum, or Sir Clive. Still, it's not all about the stats, probably. You might also be familiar with the Spectra Video 328 and might notice some similarities. So is that a coincidence? Well, not at all. The SV328 is the machine that the MSX architecture was based on and the later model, the SV728, was fully MSX compatible. Oh, and that means that we can in fact dispute one of Sir Clive's claims already, that of the MSX being a five year old design in 1984. If the MSX was based on the Spectra Video SV328 then we have to take that as the base design and Spectra Video was originally called Spectra Vision and was founded in 1981. I'm looking out for an SV328 at the moment so we'll get more into that link when I've got my mucky paws on one. For now, I just want you to know that before powering this Toshiba on, I did check all the voltages from the PSU and all of the capacitors for leaks and everything looked just fine. In fact, apart from a quick once over with a wet wipe, this machine looks almost brand new. Which is great because that means we can get to the nitty gritty bit of turning it on and looking at some software and checking out those Sinclair performance claims. Here at the shack, we'd like to give a big thanks to the sponsor of this video, my good friends at PCBWay. They'll be helping us out with our PCB fabrication needs and offer a very professional and high quality service for extremely reasonable prices. They can even populate your PCBs for you if you're tired of waving a hot iron around. There's a link to their website in the description where you can check out all of the amazing services they offer. Now back to the show. So in true anime battle style, let's face these machines off. MSX on the left, Spectrum on the right. So it's got to be said, whilst I sort of prefer the Spectrum's garish colours, the music on the MSX version is far better and much less grating. Um, I'm going to have to give this one as a win for MSX. And into round two with the arcade classic Outrun. With the better on-screen colours, slightly smoother gameplay and of course that fantastic music on the MSX version, I'm afraid I have to declare MSX a winner here also. Ultimately I can't in good conscience agree with Sir Clive Sinclair's statements at all. I picked these games because Manic Miner was a classic Spectrum original and Outrun on the Spectrum reviewed very well for a technically demanding game. In both games the graphics on the MSX were at least as good as on the Spectrum and in many ways the MSX could do things on screen that the Spectrum just couldn't like hardware scrolling and sprites. And of course the Spectrum did eventually get a decent sound chip with the AY38912 in the 128K model but that didn't come out until September 1985. 
So am I sold on the MSX? Has this given me an appetite to pursue these machines further? Well, yes it has. As with most retro machines, there is a modern storage solution called the SD Mapper, and this not only gives you SD card storage for cartridges, but also gives the machine a boost to 512K. So I'm gonna see about getting hold of one of those. And I also want to get hold of a couple of other MSX machines from different manufacturers to see just how similar they all were and whether those manufacturers couldn't help themselves and went on to make machines that were MSX compatible but also had extras that other machines didn't, thereby making a bit of a mockery of the whole standard machine approach. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this little intro to the MSX. As always, if you like the channel, please subscribe and hit the bell for notifications of new content. If you'd like to support the channel, hit the join button for details. And finally, please leave your comments as we always love to read them. So until next time in the shack, goodbye.